define a reflex. Now, what is a reflex? Reflex is an automatic and reproducible response to a stimulus. Automatic and reproducible. I've spoken about the flexor withdrawal reflex in the previous segment. You've touched something hot, immediately there is a flexion of that particular limb, which is called flexor withdrawal reflex. Or for instance, you are walking bare feet, you step on broken glass. Immediately there is a flexion of that particular leg. So that is known as your flexor withdrawal response or flexor withdrawal reflex. It's an automatic and a reproducible. Whenever a painful stimulus will be given, that limb will flex. Now, what is a reflex arc? A reflex arc consists of a receptor. From the receptor, the afferent fibers will carry the impulses to a center. Center could be anything. Center could be the spinal cord. Then it is known as a spinal reflex. It could be the medulla. Then it is known as a medullary reflex. It could be the pons, pontine reflexes if it's a midbrain, midbrain reflex, cortex, cortical reflexes. From the center arise the efferent fibers, which go to an effector. And the effector could be a muscle or a gland. So efferent fibers which go to a gland will be known as secretomotor fibers. Fibers, efferent fibers which go to a muscle will be known as the motor fibers. Afferent fibers are sensory and efferent will be motor or secretomotor. If they go to a gland, they are known as secretomotor fibers. So this is what a reflex arc looks like. Now, reflexes can be monosynaptic, bisynaptic, polysynaptic, depending upon the number of synapses. They can be spinal reflexes, they can be medullary reflexes, midbrain reflexes, cortical reflexes, depending upon what is the center. So there are different ways of classifying reflexes. Now, there are two basic reflexes that we have to do in detail, and that is the stretch reflex and what is known as the inverse stretch reflex. So I will first give you the differences between the two reflexes, then I will explain it to you. So stretch reflex, this is also known as the myotactic reflex or also known as the deep tendon jerks. The inverse stretch reflex is known as an inverse to the stretch reflex because in the stretch reflex the response is a muscle contraction but in the inverse stretch reflex it is a muscle relaxation. So this is known as a Golgi tendon organ response or sometimes also known as an autogenic inhibition. The receptor of the stretch reflex is the muscle spindle and for the inverse stretch reflex is the Golgi tendon organ. The afferent or the sensory fibers of the stretch reflex are 1A and 2, for the inverse stretch reflex are 1B. The center for both is the spinal cord. These are both spinal reflexes. The efferent or the motor fibers for both is A 
alpha. Please understand, I'm not asking what is the motor to the muscle spindle. Motor to the muscle spindle is a gamma. We are talking about with what is the motor arm or the motor fibers of the stretch reflex and the inverse stretch reflex, that is a alpha. The response. Stretch reflex causes a muscle contraction. The inverse stretch reflex causes a muscle relaxation. Number of synapses. Stretch reflex is monosynaptic. Inverse stretch reflex is bisynaptic. Now let's try and understand the stretch reflex and the inverse stretch reflex. I told you stretch reflexes are your deep tendon jerks and deep tendon jerks are such an important component of central nervous system examination, isn't it? We do the knee jerk, the ankle jerk, the biceps jerk, the brachioradialis, so the deep tendon jerks. So let's see the knee jerk. To elicit the knee jerk, which is a typical example of a stretch reflex, we tap on the quadriceps tendon. This is the quadriceps muscle. The quadriceps tendon is inserted into the tibial tuberosity. We take the knee hammer and we tap on the quadriceps tendon. When you tap on the quadriceps tendon, the tendon gets indented. It goes like this. So when the tendon gets indented, there is an increase in the muscle length. Please remember that the tendon is continuous with the muscle. Muscle forms the tendon. So if the tendon gets indented like this, the muscle length increases. The receptor for muscle length, which is present in the quadriceps muscle and also in parallel to the quadriceps muscle fiber, is the muscle spindle. Of course, I'm just showing you one spindle. There are numerous spindles in each muscle. Sensory fibers from the muscle spindle. Sensory fibers from the muscle spindle are 1A and 2. They enter into the spinal cord. In the spinal cord, these sensory fibers directly innervate the A alpha motor neuron to the same muscle. And what is going to be the response? If A alpha to the quadriceps muscle is stimulated, the quadriceps muscle will contract and the leg moves forward. This is your stretch reflex. So let us see. What is the stimulus? Stimulus is an increase in muscle length. What is the receptor for the stretch reflex? The receptor is the muscle spindle. What are the sensory or the afferent fibers? 1A and 2. What is the center for the stretch reflex? Center is the spinal cord. What are the efferent or the motor fibers of the stretch reflex? A alpha. And what is the response that you see? The response will be a muscle contraction. And how many synapses can you see over here? The number of synapses in this reflex is one. This is a monosynaptic reflex.